Mind Control Program. Controlled Offensive Behavior, USSR, is a 1972 U.S. Army study of Soviet mind control experimentation. The Russian Directed Energy Weapons Program focused on targeting of individuals, not groups. Soviet dissidents were the target of microwave anti-personnel weapons and mind-altering techniques that sought, quote, the total submission of one's will to some outside force. Electromagnetic weapon mind control surfaced in the 1973 Russian Conference on Psychotronic Research. The agenda for the Prague meeting included the following five topics. Erasure of the subconscious mind, development of ESP, induction of paranormal effects in dreams, the mechanical equivalent of neuropsychic energy, and the psi gene. The Soviets were known to have potent blinding lasers. They were also feared to have developed acoustic and radio wave weapons. A 1987 issue of Soviet Military Power, a Cold War Pentagon publication, warned that the Soviets might be close to, quote, a prototype short-range tactical radio frequency weapon. The Washington Post reported that year that the Soviets had used such weapons to kill goats at one kilometer's range. The Pentagon, it turns out, had been pursuing similar devices since the 1960s. The Russian capability, demonstrated in a series of laboratory experiments dating back to the mid-1970s, could be used to suppress riots, control dissidents, demoralize or disable opposing forces, and enhance the performance of friendly special operations teams. Pioneered by government-funded Department of the Psychocorrection at the Moscow Academy Medical Academy, Acoustic psychocorrection involves the transmission of specific commands via static or white noise bands into the human subconscious without upsetting other intellectual functions. Experts said laboratory demonstrations have shown encouraging results after exposure of less than one minute. Decades of research and development and millions of rubles have produced the ability to alter behavior on willing and unwilling subjects. In an effort to restrict potential misuse of this capability, senior Russian research scientists, diplomats, military officials, and officials of the Russian Ministry of Higher Education, Science and Technology Policy are beginning to provide limited demonstrations for their U.S. counterparts. Further evaluations of key technologies in the U.S. are being planned, and discussions are aimed at creating a framework for bringing the issue under bilateral and multilateral control. Yet these military capabilities have remained largely unknown to the U.S. and Russian public. The Department of Psychocorrection at the Moscow Medical Academy acknowledged the potential danger of this capability. The Russian experts, including George Kotov, a former KGB general now serving in a senior government ministry post, present in the report a list of software and hardware associated with their psychocorrection program that could be procured for as little as eighty thousand dollars. According to General Kotov, quote, as far as it has become possible to probe and correct psychic contents of human beings despite their will and consciousness by instrumental means, results having been achieved can get out of our control and be used with inhuman purposes for manipulating the collective psyche. Unquote. The Russian authors note that World opinion is not ready for dealing appropriately with the problems coming from the possibility of direct access to the human mind. Therefore, the Russian authors have proposed a bilateral center for psychocorrection technologies where U.S. and Russia can monitor and restrict the emerging capabilities. Dr. Igor Smirnov, a Russian expert on non-lethal weapons, was brought to the U.S. for a series of meetings in Virginia in 1993. The meetings were attended by representatives of the CIA, DIA, FBI, and ARPA. Civilians included representatives of the National Institute of Mental Health and directors of biomedical research. Dr. Smirnov and his non-lethal weapons technology was brought to Waco during the Branch Davidian siege in 1993 in hopes of using them on David Koresh but a software problem reportedly made this impossible and Smirnov could not guarantee its safety. A firm called Psychotechnologies Incorporated 
based in Richmond, Virginia, entered into an agreement with the Russians to share and develop this technology for American use. Dr. Smirnov died of a heart attack in 2005, and his patent is now held exclusively by Psycho Technologies Corporation. SciTech is controlled by Colonel John B. Alexander, NSA General Michael Aquino, and Lieutenant Colonel Albert Stubblebein, among others. He needs the money. This is called computerized psychotechnology. First, we gather information from the subconscious. Then we determine how a specific personality works. Officially for psychiatric use, this device was born of the long-standing Soviet effort to get inside the head of the enemy. At normal speed, the numbers on the screen appear meaningless. But when we slowed down our video frame by frame, we found subliminal flashes of words. Words like fear and neurosis. These words trigger electrical activity responses in the brain and reveal private anxieties and other weaknesses. And this command, which is brought in bypassing the consciousness, has the same effect as a commandment. It's like a word of God. So we simply cannot disobey it. So we said, well, what are the applications? And they said, well, they had tested um, with a simple phrase, bring us cake, and that they had piped that bring us cake in white noise up to the ground level, masquerading as just machinery noise, and both the workmen outside and their colleagues who worked on the ground level within 24 hours had come at different times of the day bringing them cake. The Strategic Defense Initiative the Star Wars program routinely falsified research data according to military sources.